So, um, how did that come to an end, then, Jason? How did that with um, the subs? Yeah. Well, I was living over in Germany, and I uh, I got married to a German woman named Nina. It's awesome. And then um, we had a Japan tour in '06, and I was going to move back here. I was going to move back from 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 Germany to uh, to, to to Berkeley, um, and we had a Japan Japanese tour right and I kind of had a falling out with the the promoter and because I thought he did a shitty job some British guy and um I usually don't get mad about shit usually I let things but this time I I felt like he kind of fucked us and I uh got kicked out of his house for saying some things and just kind of had a bad time in Japan when we should have really killed it had a great right. time so I just felt like, yeah, it's time for me to do something else. And I was young and cocky and whatever. Moved Were you back exclusive to, to the UK subs during that time? Um, I had a band called Cross Stitched Eyes in Germany. Uh, yeah, I saw, well. I, I saw that you put it in. And band we were on Alternative Tentacles, uh -huh. and, and uh, I sang, and that was kind of my baby. So I, I, I just felt like I kind of ran my course with UK subs. But, of course, right when I quit, they get on a tour with Motorhead, and they fucking, <laughs> like, dude, I could have I could have been on that tour. That always happens. I know. <laughs> but that's supposed to happen like that. I know. You get the good, <laughs> and you get the bad. I know, I know. But, um, but then I, I found myself back here, um, you know, cooking and burning myself, going, what the fuck did I just quit that band for? I'm an idiot. Uh, but I built myself back up, started teaching drums, um... And then started working with Nicky Garrett again later on and, and did, you know, worked with Nick Turner from Hawkwind. We did this whole prog thing, like worked with uh, kind of progressive rock bands and worked with a band called Brain Ticket. Did a record with them. Yeah, something called Alaric too. Was oh, one yeah. One. I was in which a band a metal, called... Which yeah, the most metal thing that you've done, right? Probably. It's, and we're on Near Out Records. We're uh -huh. on 20 Bucks Spin as well. I don't know if uh -huh. you know that label. No. Um, but, um, yeah, there is, you know, heavy kind of, kind of like a nod to what was going on, like with Susie and the Banshees, Bauhaus, but taking that and making it way uh -huh. heavier, you know, and emotionally heavy, uh -huh. you know. Um, and that was cool. I did that for like 10 years. I was in the band for 10 years, but also doing other things. I was in a band called Drain the Sky as well, which we were kind of more of a hardcore band. Uh-huh. Um, with Carl from His Hero Was Gone. Did you ever hear that band? No. You should check them out. Really? Because that's the kind of punk that I was getting into. I guess it's hardcore, but it was sound. it's heavier than shit. Man. I like it heavy, fast, and raw. I'll, like sen I'll, I'll, I'll send you some His Hero Was Gone stuff. I think you'll really like that because it's, it's, it was brutal coming up listening to that shit. It was awesome. Um, so, yeah, man, and then uh, after the Nick Turner thing kind of burned out, I realized I, my heart wasn't in it and... I was kind of feeling depressed after a really long, very cold tour in the back of a shitty truck. Um, Ooh. Jello gave me a call, and then I joined his band. You know, we're going to take another break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to get into talking about your relationship with Jello Biafra. Sure. We're going to talk about Charger. We're going to talk about you ch teaching yeah. kids yeah. and how to play drums and how yeah. much you know. We're going to talk about all that stuff when we come back on Zetro's Toxic Vault. 
What's up everybody, Zetro here, and you know I like hot sauce. If you're a metal guy, you're probably eating your burrito guy, because I know all the Exodus guys love to eat Mexican food and love to eat hot food. Well, I have an amazing sponsor for our show, Hella Hot Hot Sauce. They make all different kinds of flavors that actually a lot of their flavors sponsor different musicians or DJs or have different themes to them. You can go to hellahothotsauce.com. You can, they got mild stuff, they got medium stuff, and they got really good hot stuff. It's good burn your tongue right off your fucking mouth stuff. So go to hellahothotsauce.com and get some hot sauce today. Like to send a birthday greeting or a meeting or an encouragement or any kind of thing to someone from me? Go to cameo.com, search me. You can book me and I do all that kind of stuff. Say you wanna send somebody a special congratulation or it's their birthday or they just got married or had a kid and what a cool way is to have Zetro congratulate them or say something to them, some words of encouragement, any of that kind of stuff. Go to cameo.com and book me today. And we're back, and we were going to have you go into uh, uh, talking about Jello, but we're going to back up a little bit before that because you got you got a really interesting story to tell. I want you to talk about that era a little bit. All right. So, so uh, six years after quitting the UK subs, I had I I was doing my own thing with Alaric with cross stitch dies, um, and living in a punk warehouse not too far from here um, called Punks with Presses. And I'd broken up with my wife. You were living there. I was living there, yeah. That's very punk, Jason. I mean, that you are that is that, that's punk, right? I, I don't know. I, yes, I, it is. I yes, like, it I is. I like I like doing yes. things different, and I like no, that, that's punk. And I like paying four hundred bucks a month for rent. I love that <laughs> punk too. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Being and getting I, it for dude, free. I had my own place with a with a nice loft and a warehouse full of people I kind of grew up with. AK Press, the publishing company was downstairs. Another printing press. It was just like people that I'd known from the punk scene forever in this one warehouse. It was like a big family, but you had your own space, your own kitchen. It was fucking amazing. It was great. So anyways, um, it was a Halloween night in 2012. Um, my friend Lizzie wanted to walk to a party down here on 24th and Filbert. And we walked down there, which I didn't want to walk. I usually ride my bike. It, you know, Halloween especially is like, you know, bullies on the playground, people trying to fuck with, you know, hipsters and whoever and trying to rob them and just take their shit. So, of course, we run, ran into some guys. They ask us uh, what time it is. And they wanted us to reach in for their phone, for our phones. Of course. While they pull a gun on you. And uh, I go for the big guy. I'm the tallest. And they put a gun to my head. It was raining that night. I had an umbrella in my hand, and uh, I turned around and knocked the fucking gun out of his hand and ran as fast as I could, thinking that the people with me were also going to, their street smarts weren't as keen. I've been, I've been jumped here. I've been chased here my whole life. It's like, it's fucking scary. you got to fucking get out. You have when, to run. you got to run. <laughs> and I was zigzagging in case he was going to try to shoot me. Of course, he didn't fire anything. I don't even know if the gun was loaded. He was just trying to get my wallet and whatever. And in my, in my mind, I'm like, I don't want to go to the DMV for this motherfucker. That was God, it. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck about their credit cards or their money. Nobody wants to go to the DMV. That's amazing that you just said that. Fuck, shoot me. But God forbid me go to the fucking DMV. It's true. I'm t I know. I don't care, man. I know. I don't care. I don't care. Just I don't make me fucking go there. So... Uh, oh, I got man. away. I got away. And what I, a reputation the DFV has. <laughs> God damn. I got away and I'm shaking and I'm, I make someone drive me home and I'm, I write something on the Facebook, right? And um, just about it, right? And then uh, Nikki Garrett, who I hadn't talked to since 06, since I quit the subs, he goes, uh, I think you got to get out of Oakland, mate. Uh, yeah. I know how. I, I know how you got to get out, and I know how to help you. Blah blah blah. Give me a call. So I call him. He's like, it's just the <coughs> tip of the iceberg, mate. We, uh, I got a gig. I need a drummer. I'm working with Nick Turner. Working with Brain Ticket. We'll totally get you sorted, mate. <laughs>
So like, you know, I'm like, fuck it, man. I got nothing to lose. I just got through a divorce. I'm like in like a weird spot in my life. I need a new band. I need a new direction. And so I started playing music with him. And it was definitely going down the, the progressive rock um, direction. And I, I'm all open. I'm, I'm an explorer. I want to do new shit. I want to, I want to uh, play a different style of music every once in a while. I want to try to play jazz sometimes. I want to try. I, want, I need to try new things. Um, and you got to be open to it, and you got to be flexible, right? If you want work as a drummer. So um, I uh, started working with him, and we we're gonna write some songs to bring to LA to record with Nick Turner. We haven't met Nick Turner. We didn't. I started going over the Hawkwind shit. And listening to Do Re Mi, this record, right. with Lemmy on bass, and listening to Space Ritual, sure. and going, wow, I get to play with Nick Turner, who played with fucking Lemmy, and like all that has all these stories. The six degrees of separation, that's so cool, Just right? Just rad, right? right. And so uh, they say, write a, a space rock song, right? And I'm like, space rock? What do I know about space? 1986, we all saw the Challenger go up, right, in January, uh, over the Florida, in Florida, or whatever, and blow just up disintegrate. and that poof of smoke or whatever that uh, cloud of smoke kind of burned a hole in my mind so I wanted to make like a metaphorical story about a one of the victims going up in the rocket witnessing his demise spirit gets propelled into the atmosphere and he's in a purgatory state witnessing his old earth, the earth, his old home, and the stars looking a little bit brighter, a little, a little bit closer than, than, than they did before. So I was like, that's my space ghost. I'm going to write this space ghost song. And I love the Amoebics. I don't know if you ever listened to Amoebics. They were like a punk crossover metal band no. from Britain, but they were like <clears throat> squatters, and they're from uh, Bath, Bristol area. And they were my favorite. That was my shit. That were, they were like precursor to Neurosis. Amoebics were the best like metal slash punk band that they were my favorite band. Um, so I was like, well, kind of bit some Amoebics riffs to play a Hawkwind song. You know, Amoebics listen to fucking Hawkwind. So I create, wanted to create this song that made you feel like you're blasting off. Right. So I wrote it, went down and recorded it uh, with Nick, Mitt, Nick Turner, kind of conducted the, the whole uh, the production of the song, conducted the guitar solo. What did he think of it? What, what was his take on it? He liked it, but he's really stoned all the time. So I, I, I was just I telling him how guy. to. I was telling him how to. You know, we were. I don't. I don't know. I, could, I couldn't read him. Let's just say that. And did you write the whole thing? I wrote the whole thing. Lyrics, the music, the, everything. And he was cool with following your arrangements. Fuck and yeah. it, really, he loved it. And, and then that's great. A couple months later, the record label calls me up and they say your song made the A side of the single, and is going to open the record, and we're making a video of it. So that was like my first taste of like, holy shit, I'm not just a drummer. I can write songs that people... I'm a composer. That Kind of, right? Yeah, or, sure, why not? You are, why not? And so that, that felt really good, um, especially, and I don't know... What should, year are we in now, Jason? 2013. 2013. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was rad. And then we started touring, and um, I ended up being on two other records with Nick, or actually maybe three. I'm on this weird record with him and Billy Cobham. I don't know if you really, know who that is. Really, of course. Is. Um, That's very jazzy. Very jazzy. Very well, jazzy. fusion. He, he was a, he's an amazing, <coughs> amazing yeah, drummer. Yeah, yeah. I got to meet him once. He was ama amazing. Anyways, so that was my Nick Turner story. That was that was uh, a really good time. And you guys and are not doing anything anymore? Or? Nick and I, no. I, I, I left the band because of, uh, after a tour, I just felt drained. And I uh, needed to change. And it was like a 24 shows and 24 day tour, no Ooh. sleep in the back of a, a giant, oh. a giant like box truck. <coughs> that's one of those city uh, transporters that aren't supposed to be taking over the rock. You're not supposed to take those things over the Rocky Mountains <laughs> in November. <laughs> like, fuck that, man. That's punk. That was, well, it wasn't. It was more prog. But, but it that's was, punk. It was torture. It was fucking torture. That's torture. So, but. I, I got burned out on that tour, and I was like, ah, oh, I can't. But luckily enough, at the beginning of the tour, when we were on fire, Biafra came to the show and saw us. I had tried out for his band four years prior, didn't make it. So he saw us. He loved the show. After the tour, calls me up, and he goes, you know, Jason, you know, I'd like you to try out for GSM again. And I, got, I felt my ego was hurt for, from four years prior, as anybody's would. Beeb, and I was like, I don't know if I should give him the time of day, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, fuck it, dude. Don't be a dick. 
call him back, like go to the go to the the, the audition. I, there were a whole bunch of other drummers that were. Oh, uh, there were. The, so the, it wasn't just exclusively. It wasn't just you. me. I mean, I mean, throughout a period of a few weeks, uh-huh. I, I'd hear about other friends of mine right. trying out, um, and I was not thinking I was going to get the gig. But then Jello calls me up, and or an act, they actually say, "Can you can you come to the practice room tonight?" And I show up, and then Ralph, guitar player, says, "Here's your key to the shed." All right. Wow, I'm that's in, the official. I'm in the band. I got the key. <laughs> yeah. He gave me the key. Yeah. How cool is so that? So right out, right out the gate, we did a great European, uh, big European tour in a in a bus, and it, that just felt fantastic. Uh, do you, um, you guys play Kennedy songs as well? We do. About five of them a set. Yeah. A five a set. And how many songs do you guys play in a set? 13, 14. Have you been active lately? Uh, well, not obviously because we of put a new on. record out. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. I mean, I mean, uh, have you booked anything on the, and before the pandemic hit? Were you uh, were you guys? We hadn't playing? played a show in a while because uh, I think our last show was uh, we did a small run in Spain a few years ago, maybe two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen. That was a while ago now, but um, but yeah, we we did like five shows in Spain. And then I, that was our last. Our last show was like in the Canary Islands, I think. Wow, somewhere kind of cool. Cool. In a sex dungeon. It was really weird. I, it was really weird, but it was cool. What's it like playing with someone like Jello? Great, man. We get along really well. That's great. We, we respect each other, and um, you know, he's a good friend. And and you know, everybody's got their 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 quirks and things. And we all, you know, as a band, as a band, you're not going to get anywhere in music if you don't have an ego a little bit. You, you got to learn how to, na- sure. you know, a. a you know when to talk, know when to just sit in the back of the fucking bus, put your headphones in, and shut the fuck up. That's, that's always been my thing. Like don't, certain th- sometimes you get involved, you know when to pick and choose your battles. And you're, if you live that way, I guess you can, uh, you can survive in the industry or, or doing what we do for a long time. You know? Right. Well, that's longevity. Is you better know how to give and take. Yeah. Because this business is not for everybody. And I've said it millions and millions of times. What we do is not for everyone. And it's there's not. a lot of, again, this is a very selfish business. It doesn't care about your birthday. It doesn't care about your anniversary. It doesn't care about Christmas. It doesn't give a shit. When you got to go, you got to go. Yeah. And you have to do that. And, it, and a lot of people don't realize that. They say the video of the backstage party one time where it looks like everybody's having the greatest fucking time. And that's normally not how it is every night. You know what I mean? It's no, work. Man. It's very it's hard. Work. You got to move. Like you said, you were in a fucking box truck for 24 days. It's like South America is almost the same way. You can't travel anywhere in a car. You have to fly. Mm-hmm. So to get to the next date, you're going to play at 11 o'clock at night, get off stage at 1, 1 30, get yep. back to the hotel at 2 30, but back in the fucking lobby at 4 30, because you may only have one flight that's going to go from Brasilia to Manaus, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. you got to get on it because you got to play tonight. And there's no sleep. So I understand, and it's not for everyone. I've been through many musicians, I'm sure like you have, that have gone on and went out, and after a while I said, I can't do this anymore. I, I can't. This is not for me. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's been a long time since I've done, like, a really long, well, I guess it's been since, since 2015 since I've done a real long, like, box truck Thing that would have probably not felt like a big deal in my twenties. Right? No, no, no. Exactly. And as you get older, I mean, you're in your forties now. Yeah. I'm in my late fifties, and, and and it's like I I couldn't do it like that. I just can't. You I, have to I, I don't be. Care. You have to be a little smarter. Yeah. But oh, also, we don't we don't have to pay our dues as much. Hopefully. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I think you're always paying dues. You are a little bit. You're, you're but, always you know, paying dues, even yeah. for us. We're always. Paying our dues. You I know, was hoping you don't things. have to anymore. But <laughs> do you have anything lined up with uh, GSM right now? Not right now. Not so right now. So even though that, that that things are opening up, you guys don't have anything. Not like. at the moment. We uh, put out a new seven inch. Came out two days ago. Uh, put out that album that came. That, yeah, that was the, great. I, I'm, I was glad you like, I'm glad it's you really, like. I'm glad you like. And to me again, and I was telling him before we actually got on camera, I'm a dead Kennedy purist. I love him to death, and. I really didn't listen to any any of the GSM stuff because I'm so into Kenny's. And then I listened to this record that you were on, and I'm like, man, there's so much similarities. I'm going to go back now and listen to the catalog. Cool. And that's me for being a dick, a naive dick it for was, not it was going fun. there. Recording you know, that stuff, like the first track, I got to do a whole bunch of metal percussion. Right? He's like, just, and he kind of gave me some direction of like a band called uh, Fetus and some other like crazy metal percussive bands 
And uh, I, 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 I dug around and I listened to their stuff and I was like, I could do this, this is gonna be rad. So I overdubbed my drums with a bunch of shit I bought from Home Depot. <laughs> so like, like pipes and all cool sorts of- How cool is that? Industrial and, little bit, huh? It was totally industrial and like stacking chinas on top of each other. Nice. Create a whole drum set for myself of just scrap sounds. sounds. And, uh, and he gave me free reign. And it was a little overbearing, I think, for him to hear so much of it all around, all over Satan's Come Over, the first track. Oh, yeah, the first track is. In fact, I was a bit surprised when I heard that. How like, loud. Seems, yeah. And there's a lot of crazy like, shit. Production and shit going on, That's, which is not normal. That was me banging on you know, stuff. That was killer. I mean, <laughs> I, but I liked the way it opened. And I Ooh. liked the presence of the song. It's really aggressive. Yeah. And it's, totally matches the lyrical content in there so yeah it was it was uh it was a fun record to record and write you know it took a long time to write those songs but i'm, I'm really glad we uh we did it you know i'm stoked nice really stoked we're gonna take one more break and then we're gonna get back and we're gonna talk to jason about teaching kids drums and my one of my favorite bands a lot of people here on this set right now charger when we come back